Today's episode of Necronomapod is brought to you by Beardology. There are a lot of imitators out there, but there's only one place I buy my beard oil. Beardology beard oil nourishes your skin and won't leave you with that greasy feel. With over 17 cents available in their extensive product line, I trust my beard to Beardology. You can find Beardology at beardology.co. Use code NECRO15 to receive 15% off your purchase. Beardology, discover the best way to avoid the shave. If you came here today because you're a flat earther, you should probably press the stop button now. On this episode, we'll take a look at the story of one of today's biggest online controversies, the flat earth theory. We'll discuss its beginnings dating back to the 19th century, all the way to today and how smartphones help spread this idea into today's society, much like another conspiracy we've already discussed on the show. Who are these people? What do they actually believe? Why are they so damn aggressive? And what special names do they have for us sensible people, I mean non-believers? If you're like me and never knew the true story behind the Flat Earth Theory, this one is going to be fun. And who knows, you might just become a Flat Earther yourself. I'm Mike. I'm Ian. And I'm Dave. If you thought some of our previous stories featured varying collections of morons, stick around. Tonight's episode is a contender for the Dumb Fuck Global Championship belt. This is Necronomapod. If you already think 9-11 is fake and you're watching 9-11 truther videos and the algorithm keeps on suggesting flat earth videos, if that first video is kind of persuasive, I think we're all susceptible to it on some point. Yeah. If you have that, if you already believe in mass deception, it seems like a giant leap to go from 9-11 was an inside job to the earth is flat. Right. You just keep working up at like different tiers to where, okay, now we're on this tier and now we're on this tier. The way that these people often describe it is taking the red pill, right? Which is from the matrix, you can take the blue pill and live in, you know, the world that everyone has, says all these fake lies, or you can see the truth and how the world really is. I think that they really believe that once you have chosen to open your mind to all these things, then the floodgates are open. All right, off the top, right out of the gate, Dave, I'm throwing it to you. Fuck, Mary kill. Katy Perry, Lady Gaga. Oh, no. And Pink. Oh, no. It's a very <laughs> difficult one. I know it is. And you're next, Ian, so you better start thinking. Who, what was the first one? Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, and Pink. <laughs> I kill Pink. Fuck Lady Gaga, as you say, and marry Katy Perry. Of course you may marry Katy Perry. If you Do you need to think? You got it. Uh, Yeah, I think I got it. I would do kill Pink, fuck Katy Perry, and marry Lady Gaga. Wow. Wow, so we're going to go three for three on being different. Because wow. I would, yeah. I would marry Katy Perry. I would fuck Pink just for the the fun of. It. I mean, that'd be a good time. And I would kill Lady Gaga. I wouldn't be thrilled with it, but <laughs> Gaga's <laughs> throwing me here. I would kill Lady Gaga, and I she's she's awesome. But I think I would have to. I think two and three are interchangeable. Two Katy Perry's at the top yeah. of, of my list. I think so. I want to play with those things <laughs> every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> All right. Well, we're not done. <laughs> We did our females. Now we're going to do our males. Right. Ian, I'll start with you. Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> Fuck, Mary kill. <laughs> what? <laughs> those aren't very good. I think those are fantastic choices. Pacino, De Niro, and Hoffman? Yeah. <laughs> so fucking I'll stupid. lead us off. I would marry Bobby D. I would probably fuck Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> and I would have to kill Al Pacino, I think. I'm not happy about that one either, but I think that's the route I would go. I think I would kill Dustin Hoffman, F. De Niro, and marry Pacino. Wow. Because every morning he could say, it's a great ass. <laughs> you got him so flustered he's falling off his chair. So look at that, this question. It's a great ass. <laughs> oh, boy. We're off the charts here. <laughs> Yeah. You're confident in your ass, Dave. He might not love it that much. So what you said you're going to kill who? Hoffman? Yeah. And fuck De Niro and Mary Pacino. So that's yeah, different. I would have to. Go and I would finish stage, early right? with De Niro and he would go, you blew it. <laughs> What's that from? Um, I don't remember. Damn it. I'm drawing a blank. I think you're just making up lines oh. to movies now. Oh, God. We're going to have to Google, Google check this one. 
Uh, so on another note, well, Ian didn't finish yet. He I said, said he was, say, oh, I thought I interrupted him. Sorry, no. you got too excited about your joke and you missed what he had to say about it. Oh, uh, so we got t-shirts available. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, we posted it out earlier this week. Necronomapod.com. We are taking pre-orders now uh, for the next couple weeks. So put in your orders. Um, and then in a few weeks, we'll give you guys an update on, on you know, when, when you should be expecting them. But it'll be a few weeks at least just because we want to get a feel for what everyone likes and, uh, you know, kind of what everyone wants. And they're going to be kind of made to order at the start here. Yeah. Although I feel like those Mr. Mugs ones are going to be pretty fucking Flying popular. off the shelves, baby. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. Did not so, think 43 episodes in we'd be, uh, or whatever this is by the time this comes out, that we'd be uh, selling shirts. Yeah. Ian, when you first thought of this idea back, what, November, December, when this was kind of like just uh, swimming around in your mind and we were talking about it, did you think that fucking Mr. Muggs from Jonestown was going to be the star of the show? I did not. <laughs> and just disclaimer, the shirt does not come with your own personal fuck schedule. we just like to Mm-mm. make that clear. No, you'll have to make your own. Yeah. You still have to keep your own fuck schedule. Yeah. So a huge shout thank you to everybody that's listened and especially uh, especially everybody on Instagram. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't look at Twitter very much. Twitter, so too. Know, we, yeah, we got a lot of responses on, on all the socials. So. Yeah. We've got someone making uh, Dave's monk chants into, uh, into uh, a Twitter video that's featuring true. random pictures of Jesus. Yeah. So Nothing to do with our merchandise, but yeah, that's what they're doing. Very impressive. It, it was, it was, Yeah. Not bad at all. So, yeah, necronomapod.com. Check out the website. Uh, go ahead and order some shirts if you uh, feel compelled. And uh, in a few weeks, we'll get those all finalized, and we'll keep you guys posted as the uh, as the weeks go by. So we won't make you wait too long for those shirts, though, because we're pretty excited about them as well. Very excited. You guys ready to piss some people off? Yeah. Uh, first off, the, 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 the <laughs> De Niro quote was from Copland. Copland. Oh, okay, that's a good movie. It is a good movie. It's an underrated movie. It is. It's good. Sylvester Stallone, Harvey Keitel. Yep. I've never seen it. De Niro. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, Ian, what do we got today? Well, tonight we're going to get into the Flat Earth Conspiracy. We're two, about wor- to get two words that don't belong in the same <laughs> sentence. We're about to get trolled on the social medias. Possibly. The interwebs. Well, I, I got to say I'm conflicted about even doing this episode and giving credence to this nonsensical fucking argument why do you think lady gaga fans are gonna get mad about how her surname um i don't know it's a good conspiracy to cover it's a huge one it's very popular i mean there's more this is more realistic than that fucking weather balloon we covered in roswell the flat earth is more realistic than a weather balloon no the weather balloon is very real it's I, just did i state that wrong i just meant the maybe roswell i heard it UFO. wrong because i've been drinking quite heavily today, i'm just trying to so. troll ian with yeah. this weather balloon. I feel like I've lost IQ points this week just reading this drivel associated with this group of people. It wasn't that bottle of Crown Royal you finished before. That we might started. have had something to do with it, but Dave is hashtag unhinged tonight. All right, let's get into flat earth. So the flat earth conspiracy theory is it's exactly what it sounds like. The earth is not round like we've been taught. Instead, it's a flat disc that's surrounded by ice. <laughs> or the ice might be in the middle, or the Earth is under a dome like the Truman Show, or it's under a pyramid. <laughs> Those all make perfect sense to me. <laughs> hey, Mike, what other land that we know has a big wall of ice associated with it? Oh, you don't know? That'd be Westeros from Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is this, is this something I'm supposed to get? No, I'm not a nerd. I don't watch that shit. <laughs> What is it, Westeros? Yeah. Yes, sir. So was Game of Thrones <laughs> taking a knock at Flat Earthers? I don't think so. No. no. Just a big wall of ice in the north. Okay. <laughs> so, but regardless of, uh, of what model the Flat Earthers subscribe to, there's only two things that they, agree on, that they agree on no matter what, that the Earth is not round and humans have never been to space. Okay. And that's what this all comes down to in the end, right? It's just their biggest argument is we've never been to space. Yeah. Do we think they're, that this whole thing is a, a big joke or to be famous or for monetary gain? Or do we think they're, they really believe this I stuff? Think, I think that's a good question for the end of this episode, maybe. Yeah. I mean, well, that's because the next thing I had in the outline here is that obviously we're going to be making jokes at the expense of flat, earth, flat earthers, but I wanted to try to figure out 
how so many people have gotten to this point that they've become so distrust distrusting in society that some of them even question the concept of height. Like what is what is height? My mind is height even, even real. Even what does that mean? Yeah. That. What is that? I don't know what that means. We're all flat. I, I mean, what most, is it? Most of Dave's jokes are, but are we all flat? I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Taking cheap shots. <laughs> It's the thing, and we, you know, I mean, we'll get into it later too. But there could be a few people making some money off of this on YouTube and stuff. But it's so it's like a pyramid scheme for idiots, where the people at the top uh, propagate these uh, arguments. And well, it's funny you should say that because the Earth is under a pyramid, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, I don't know. Let's let's go through it. All right. One of the biggest misconceptions is that Christopher Columbus was the one to discover that the Earth was round. Actually, that idea, uh, the idea that the Earth was round showed up in Greek philosophy in the 6th century BC. And that's something that Angie and I were talking about the other night when we were actually talking about Flatter. She was like, wasn't it Christopher Columbus that... I don't like that. I think that's a popular myth. Yeah, that people like, before yeah, whatever. Columbus thought the Earth was flat. And you're right. right. It's just not true. Yeah. Um... And I mean, and there was evidence provided for the Earth being round by 3030 BC that spread throughout the world from then on. Because it's easily provable by geometry, you know, 3,000 years ago. Well, easily. It, it depends on what what uh, <laughs> what what version of math you're oh, you're using. Okay, please tell me more. <laughs> What's really fascinating about the Flat Earth Movement, and that's it's relatively new in the modern era, and it gained most of its steam in 2013. And if you if any if you guys listen to our episode on gang stalking, it's a very similar phenomenon about as to how it spread and kind of the behavior of the people who believe in it. Gang stalking available in the archives. I think that one needs a little bit of a bump. Didn't do so well. Check it out. Probably got us the most heat we've ever had from an episode, right? There were some yeah, people. We've had some gang stalking victims reach out to us and tell us we were wrong because we've never been gang stalked. That's true. They were so not thrilled. What this means is that you know before the internet, kooky people did not have widespread access to kooky ideas, so it did not propagate itself, right? Well, with conspiracy theory back in the day, you had to really go out of your way to to figure to yeah. get like it wasn't that. an encyclopedia at the library so they might not come across these right ideas and you had to yeah you had to go out and find someone who mm-hmm. had like an unpublished or self-published book that was right. writing about it you know especially and it was real um some of the ideas that get lumped in with flat earth is something that you would find back in the day at gun shows like when we get into the oklahoma city bombing when we do mm-hmm. an episode on that those kind of conspiracies were th- floating around gun shows back in the 80s and, yeah, and it's whatever, really surprising you know? that that would be at gun shows <laughs> so that's like but you had to really go out of your way to, mm. to, to, to never but, would have guessed that <laughs> but nowadays you can just hop on youtube and exactly you know. from the comfort of your home right but so what we found with the gang stalking thing is that it was a relatively small um search term until until 2013, and it blew up kind of the same thing as um, as Flat Earth. The smartphone sales steadily grew from 2007 through 2012, but then they just doubled in 2013. So it would give you the idea that the availability of um, to have the internet in your pocket accessible at any time, and it's specifically uh, having YouTube with the flat, with Flat Earthers case, sparked this into a a full-blown phenomenon. I bet the graph is a direct correlated line straight up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. For sure. Well, and the thing, there was, um, I think it was the New Yorker, possibly, did an article on one of the conventions, and they said from talking to everybody that it was, most of them said 2013 is when they heard about it, and 99% of them said YouTube mm. was what was where they found out about it. I've watched it. some videos at the convention, and uh, it's a sight to behold, let me tell you. It's interesting. Oh, it's interesting. YouTube, that's where I get most of my education, right? Yeah. You TED Talks? Can trust TED every- Talks? You can trust everything up there. Yeah. You can't just say whatever you want on the internet. And- no, no. Come on now. <laughs> Next, you're going to tell me Wikipedia is just bullshit. <laughs> so, like with gang stalking, there's no wiggle room with these people on what they believe. And they have a conspiratorial answer for everything that you throw at them. 
the flat earth movement has a lot of signs of being a cult, but with no one at the top. That's what we were saying earlier. There's no one person at the top of this benefiting. There are actually no one's benefiting. This is a cult with no benefits. Is what Do it we seems know like. that there's no one at the top? How do we know there's not like someone behind the scenes kind of running this and I mean, dictating what is filtered out to the masses? I mean, there's some, some couple different organizations, but in some bigger YouTube channels, but nothing. There's not like one big person or one big organization that controls all this stuff. So unlike the UFO community, they can all get their shit together and work together. No, they still Whereas fight. fucking MUFON and Nightcap that can't even take a billionaire's <laughs> money and make something work at Skinwalker Ranch. No. I know Nightcap wasn't invited to that, no, but I don't remember not. the other freaking acronyms that are all fancy. KUFOS and FUFOR. KUFOS and FUFOR. <laughs> sure, it's coming to Necronomapod soon. <laughs> That's a joke. They're not coming. <laughs> the uh, so there was uh, there was a questionnaire given out at a uh, at one of the flat Earth conventions in the past couple years. Some of the questions on there were: uh, Have you ever have people ever said that you were pushy or obsessive about flat Earth? Have you thought that if everyone knew about flat Earth, the world would be a better, a different place? <laughs> And have you noticed that you spend less time with your family and friends and more time talking to flat earthers? And the whole place said, yeah, to all those. And then it was revealed later on that these this was from a questionnaire about if you're joining a cult. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> so, you it, mean it, these people were easily duped? <laughs> <laughs> they seem so sharp. <laughs> This is like that. What's that? In all fairness, I've never met a flat earther, nor have I ever talked to one. I do not know how they seem or appear, nor did I do any research for this fucking episode because I never do. So I've not yeah. seen any of these interviews. You don't you don't have to, though. But they think the I would, fucking imagine, earth is flat. I can imagine based on what I've read in preparation for the show. <laughs> What's that, what's that living color song? Cult of personality. Yeah, that's a great song. This is the cult of imbecility. The cult of imbecility. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's like a cult. They have very cult like um, qualities to them as far as how they react to people that, that, so that question angry. them. They're yeah, so they're very aggressive. They're, they have their common enemy, and their common enemy is everyone that makes fun of them <laughs> and shits on them. <laughs> but you mean the entire globe? <laughs> People around the globe make fun of them. <laughs> but no one, they don't benefit, friend. There's no benefit to this call. It's not like... Uh, it's just their beliefs and they're angry about it and they they feel backed into a corner and they're just going to swing at everyone who disagrees with them no yeah. matter how ridiculous they might sound. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Sounds like me trying to defend NASCAR every week. <laughs> but Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, except I'm right. You guys are wrong <laughs> and you're fucking NASCARs. <laughs> <laughs> but, Maybe I'm the NASCOC actually. <laughs> yeah. But they don't they don't view this whole cult idea as a bad thing. They, instead they turn it around on um on non believers and say that people that, that are non that don't believe in that the earth is flat subscribe to the cult of quote scientism mm. and that the world would be much better without science. You know, yeah. Science like the is, Middle Ages. That was great. Science has never done anything for us. <laughs> yeah. Ever. Period. Sounds like people that don't understand science and are angry they don't understand it. Possibly. Are you implying that they're too dumb to understand science? No, I'm, I'm um, overtly stating that fact. <laughs> I'm not implying anything. They also, they have a bunch of, uh, they have a bunch of names to call people that don't agree with them. They call, like, uh, like Globers. Globe heads, globe tards, <laughs> ball tards, and globe cucks. I, I still stand by a shirt, Necronomapod shirt that says on the front, I'm a cuck. And on the back, a globe cuck. I think that's a fucking awesome shirt. Let us know if you would buy that. If As long as you're not a flat earther, if you're a flat earther, you're probably not going to buy that shirt. No. I think that's a fucking awesome shirt. I want to be a globe cuck. I saw, um, I also saw flat tards being thrown around today on some YouTube comments when I was reading, oh when I was God. watching some videos. Like to make fun of them back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Flat yeah. tards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, really original. All these insults. <laughs> so good. Globers. Ooh, you, you showed me. You got me. Yeah. But since the term cuck is 
closely associated with with 4chan lingo. It's not really a surprise that a lot of flat earthers have adopted uh, Pepe the Frog as the mascot, but instead they call him Fepe, which they say stands for flat earth people everywhere. (laughs) What exactly is 4chan? It's... An image board, yeah, it's a, it's an image board. I for, only first heard about it like two days ago when I heard of Eight Chan mm, with what had to go with these shootings that happened in you know yeah. El Paso and and Dayton and stuff. So or, or Toledo, depending on who you listen to. Um, so, but it's like a message board type thing. Yeah, it's an it's an anonymous message board. Like you don't have to sign in or anything. Mm. You just talk. And Eight Chan is like a spinoff of Four Chan. For my understanding, it's for people who were banned from 4chan. <laughs> you have to be a real piece of shit to get banned from 4chan. It says it's anonymous. Did login. you listen to the Necro or the Necro, the New York Times episode on this yesterday? I did not. So if I remember right, it was supposed to be called like Infinity Chan or Infinite Chan as the spin-off to 4chan. But the Infinity logo is a sideways eight. Right. So people started calling it eight chan. But I didn't. I don't remember it being that people who were kicked off. I could be wrong on that. But maybe that's what it was. Yeah, I. Uh, and I guess we're getting way off topic. But I just didn't know what 4chan necessarily was exactly till like two days ago when I first heard of it. Yeah, I. Um, I go to 4chan for the paranormal board, but yes, it's. But a, that sounds pretty toxic. It's ex- extremely yeah. toxic. Well, place. like the Pepe the Frog is adopted by like alt right neo Nazis, right? Is yeah, their, like calling card a mascot. fucking frog. Well, the frog used yeah. to be. It's a. It's from a comic that turned into a meme years ago. It used to be the feels bad man. You tell a story where you fucked up or you're feeling bad about yourself, and then you post a picture along with yeah. the frog, and it's hilarious. And somewhere down the line, it's turned into this whole nonsense. Just ridiculousness, but that's the wormhole we don't want to yeah, go down, right? But hmm. so it's not it's not a surprise that um, that flat earthers would call people cucks and use Pepe the Frog as <laughs> as a mascot. Pepe, <laughs> yeah, very clever. <laughs> um, and it's also no surprise that many of these people also believe in dangerous conspiracy theories like Sandy Hook being fake and PizzaGate. Which is fuck that. With their two common things to go along with 4chan stuff. Mm-hmm. So we know what we're dealing with here. And I'm not saying that's all flat earthers, but it's a lot of them. And with flat Earth too, it's it's the bottom of the barrel as far as conspiracy theory is concerned. There's nowhere else to go from there. Mm-hmm. If you believe that the Earth is flat and that there's this huge thing go, there's really there's nowhere else to you. So what do they think? And this, again, coming from someone who I knew about flat earthers, but I don't know shit about this. What do they think? There's just an edge that you can fall off? We'll, we'll get into that with this next guy here. Um, Hold your horses, Mike. <laughs> it's right very involved in a very thought out uh, scenario. Yeah, right. <laughs> so <laughs> before we get into what, what would be gained from lying about the earth being round, we'll let's take a look at the uh, the guy that brought this theory into the modern era his name was uh samuel robotham robotham would travel to universities around london during the 1800s and give lectures on his theories he used a quote scientific method called the zetetic called zetetic astronomy to prove that the earth is a flat disc centered at the north pole and surrounded by a wall of ice at the rim (laughs) So there you go. Mm-hmm. You're not going to so fall off the edge because there's ice around the mm. around the edge. And that's, I believe, where the term rim job came from, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because <laughs> you got the cold shoulder when you tried to get one? No, it just, I feel like you get, you get the chills <laughs> the first time that tongue touches you. Also, according to his, his theory, is that the sun, moon, planets, and stars are only a few thousand miles above the Earth's surface. Mm. Smart. How did he come to that theory? I, I don't know. So there's not a lot of substance to their arguments. They just kind of say well, the things. I mean, this guy's he wrote a book on this, and I mean, I did not read this book. Um, so after a while of giving lectures, Robotham released um, some pamphlets and a book detailing his theories under the name Parallax. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if he just didn't want to be associated mm, with this. It's a great theory. I don't know why he would want to be associated with it. Um, and then also. 
just when I thought that we wouldn't have an episode that that talked about religion very much. Uh oh. <laughs> we got it. We got a good review on iTunes, but we it was knocked down to it was knocked down to four stars because of thanks to fucking Dave. Taking, random hits on Christianity. Yeah. First of all, sir, they're not random, and they're all within context. <laughs> They are all, and all one hundred percent accurate. Yeah. They're consistent with the story when he's making fun of them. He doesn't just make make fun of them for no reason. Well, I thought we were so gonna now we're get gonna away fucking from tee it. him up again. <laughs> I thought we were getting away from it. Wait, with let, flat him, Earth. let him tune up his hemming <laughs> him him voice. <laughs> but, um, sh- <laughs> sure enough, they they rely heavily on the Bible for for a lot of this stuff. <laughs> of course, they do. <laughs> Uh, all fucking nonsense originates from the Bible. So here, here's some quotes that... that like, love thy neighbor, Dave? <laughs> Is that nonsense that originated from the Bible? Uh, the Old Testament. I'm fine with love thy neighbor. <laughs> if Jesus had ever actually existed, I'm fine with the stuff he preaches. People are going to hear this now and think, like, I'm a Christian, because I'm always <laughs> now just going after Dave. So Robotham, he... Uh, he, he backed up his theories with using some quotes like, Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords that by wisdom made the heavens and that stretched out the earth above the waters. <clears throat> he sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and its people are like the grasshoppers. <laughs> he stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in (laughs) again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor that was that was a nice reading bro good job call that earnest mike (laughs) also everything stupid in this world has a direct line traceable back to religion (laughs) Everything stupid in this world? Everything. Like Miley Cyrus? Wait a minute. <laughs> continue, Ian. Continue. Don't give him a chance. <laughs> so, the first two, I was like, okay, you're stretching stuff out. I guess I could see it. Um, but then that, that, that third one had me confused, so I had to look it up. And it's that when the devil took him up to the very high mountain... Hmm. He wouldn't have been able to see all these kingdoms if it wasn't flat. Oh, that makes perfect sense now. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't question it. You actually prove the the opposite point because anyone can disprove this theory by climbing up a ten foot fucking tree because you can see farther than you can on the ground, which proves that the Earth is not flat. It's easily provable by climbing a ten foot tree. This is the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard that makes sense because if it's i mean if it's the earth is curved in a globe when you climb higher you can see further over when you're flat you can't see as far correct it's simple geometry yeah that does make sense that's one of the only things that's made sense because all of this is so confusing (laughs) to me i'm a fucking dumb shit well that's true i'm just kidding that's not (laughs) but like that's that makes sense yeah well, it's speculated that Robotham didn't even believe in this stuff that he was saying. That he was just uh, doing it for money. Oh, a religious person didn't <laughs> believe what he was saying? He was just doing it for money? That never happens in this country. <laughs> well, after he died, people who knew him came out. And- <laughs> <laughs> people who knew him came out and said it was a scam. But regardless of, of what these people who knew him said that his model is one of the main go-to ones to this day is that the disc with the ice around the outside. Oh yeah. Oh. All right. The old rim job theory. But yep. there's, there's literally no proof. You're not, you're not bringing that, any thing, proof yeah. to the table at all to say that. You're sounding like a real globe cuck over there. <laughs> yeah. Question. You can't stuff. just say Hold this on, you stuff. Glober. You have to provide some scientific proof to, to say these things. You need to prove your science, Dave. <laughs> That's what they say. The burden of proof is on you to prove that yeah, it's a you globe. you scientismist. Show them. You got There's s- photos from space no, showing the no, round no, earth. Oh, you, sir, just wait. <laughs> you, sir, just wait. God, I hate fucking stupid people. It's the worst. All right, Ian, let's continue down this path. What do we got next? So it didn't take long for someone else to pick up where Robotham left off. And this was done by a man named Wilbur Glenn Voliva. 
So Voliva put the Bible first. Oh, terrific. <laughs> and then he used the flat earth theory to prove that the Bible was right. <laughs> wow. So, so he took the earth theory to prove the Bible, didn't use the Bible to prove the earth. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. What say you, Dave? Oh. <laughs> Switching up here. Those Bible people who are, well, we don't even need to repeat it. <laughs> I mean, go ahead, Dave. Just lower our rating on iTunes. Go ahead, say it. A bunch of goat fuckers who didn't oh. know where the sun went at night. <laughs> there goes our five star rating. <laughs> God damn. Now we'll never make the charts. <laughs> Maybe we should file under the Christianity section. That would be great. <laughs> We'd do real well over there. So he was able to convince a whole town of people in Zion, Illinois, to believe that the earth was flat using evangelical Christianity. Voliva said the world was at war with, quote, trinity of evils, evolution, historical criticism of the Bible, and modern astronomy. <laughs> People just love being dumb, don't they? Well, they love it in this country. It's kinda, love being it's, dopey. It's got to put you in like a real... I feel like it would put you in a miserable spot to just cram your life down to just this one thing like that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, yes, sir. To be so... I don't know. I'm not sure of something, but just... What just, year are we talking about here? Uh, this is in uh, like around 19, 1920s. Yeah. The so, whole town, huh? Doesn't sound like it was a very big town. Yeah. Zion, Zion Illinois, Illinois. It's not a very big town. No. So, Voliva believed that the earth, and only the earth, was made for humans. To believe the earth was round, or that the stars were anything but an illusion, was a sure way to go to hell. That literally makes no sense <laughs> at all. That's just nonsensical <laughs> statement. And I mean, in all fairness to Christianity, this is a very, stars? very small people in Christianity, I would assume, believe that the stars are an illusion. What do they think the stars are? <laughs> all right. Am I jumping ahead? No, no, but we can we can go down this now. I was holding this nonsense. I shouldn't have asked because I'm going to have to pee so bad. I twinkle, twinkle, right. hallucination. <laughs> so, That's about it. So in this action, this fits it more in with aliens because this is a common, kind of a common thing with aliens. So stars, aliens coming here, specifically aliens, but anything to do with space really are illusions made by the devil to get us to question and believe in space. So when we start to believe in aliens and we're believing in space and stuff, we're actually turning our back on God's creations. So to want to leave the earth Hmm. to explore space is to leave God. I've always wished I was born like a thousand years in the future when all of this nonsense is not around anymore. But will it all not be around anymore? I don't think it will be. Maybe 2,000 years when we're not inhabited by imbeciles across (laughs) the globe anymore. That's a statement, man. I don't know. Because, well, the the alien thing, like that aliens or demons or, or things like that, it's a pretty common one. But then they, flat earth people, kick it up a notch saying that it's like enticing us to leave. Well, look, if if we discovered aliens and they visited us, it disproves all of the Bible and the nonsense because, you know, they think that the God created the earth and that's it. There's no mention of other planets or other galaxies or... Anything in the Bible, so that maybe that disproves all that's of in it. The Bible too, part two, <laughs> the yet to be written Bible. Yeah, it's not dropped yet. <laughs> just wait, man. <laughs> Got to pre-order. It. I haven't finished everything yet. I mean, just to think that there's only life on this earth is just so I don't know, well, self-centered or it nar- seems a bit small. narcissistic. It, it seems it's a bit small. small. It's one hundred percent small. Well, specifically with the flat Earth theory is is. We are the center of the universe and the flat yeah, earth theory. Which is this is absolutely around ridiculous. Us. And I mean, I'm and if I'm correct on most of the theories, is that especially like the Truman Show theory with the dome, is that's this is it. These yeah. stars that we see, the sun and the moon, that's it. There's yeah. no planets. These planets are all yeah. Well, and lies. they think the sun and the moon like spin around over the top of the disk Earth, right? Yeah, we're gonna get into all that. Okay, all that later on. <laughs> I mean, they're they're morons. I mean, they're just a hundred percent morons. All this stuff is easily think, provable. I don't think by, Dave can stress that enough. By middle school science experiments. I mean, you know. Yeah, and like I said in the beginning, my thing, and we'll touch on it again at the end. It was just trying to figure out what 
is behind the, you know like what is the motivation right. behind this conspiracy theory and I didn't really answer my question for myself but we'll we'll get into it right. at the end so I'm moving upward gentlemen <laughs> I'm moving upward so things didn't end well for uh Voliva by 1927, he had milked the town of Zion, Illinois, for uh, out of about five million dollars. <laughs> Stop! Over it. his time he doing shit, he would never. <laughs> That's like a hundred million dollars in the twenties. Yeah, That's a lot of money. Along with the Great Depression, with the Great Depression. Yeah. Well, yeah, with that right around the corner, people were uh, were not thrilled that this guy had been scamming them for money. So Voliva tried to get people back on his side by putting together a big play for the town, which oh, I don't. That'll win him back. <laughs> <laughs> give me five million, I'll give you the play of a lifetime. Yeah, play. like our town. But <laughs> some, someone from the town was—they're just like fuck that, and they burnt the building down before the play could go. So, so that was that. And uh, so Voliva died in 1942 at the age of 72. Despite his claims that he would live until he was 120, mm. citing a strict diet of Brazilian nuts and buttermilk to, oh. to get him there. Yeah. Sounds the so you mean almost a cult leader incorrectly predicted his fate? Yeah. <laughs> that never been. happens. <laughs> Say it ain't so. And so with that, the Flat Earthers died off and they were never heard from again, right, Ian? You would have thought. Like, but wait, there's more. <laughs> we like to drink beer. A lot of it. After a long night of drinking and talking crime and conspiracies, there's nothing that wakes us up and gets us ready to start the day better than just brew coffee. With a great selection of roast levels to choose from, you're guaranteed to find one that suits your style. Small batch roasted to highlight the unique features of each coffee bean, Just Brew Coffee caters to both casual and hardcore coffee drinkers alike. Since 2010, Just Brew Coffee has worked tirelessly to perfect the roasting process and technique which has resulted in seriously delicious, always flavorful, and never bitter tasting coffee. If you're already drinking JBC, raise your mug. If you're not, raise your standards. Check them out in social media and remember, they roast, you just brew. Check out their new online store at youjustbrew.com and up your coffee game today. Use code NECRO15 to receive 15% off your order of two pounds or more. So you, what you, like you were saying, you would have thought that this would have died with... Uh with Boliva, but a couple decades later, a man named Samuel Shenton picked it up and ran with it. Shenton's original idea was that if the Earth was round and consistently and constantly spinning, then logically a device could be built that flies straight up into the sky and just parks there. Then it would just let the spinning Earth do the traveling for it. <laughs> that really hurts my head. I don't know what that means. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nonsensical statement. He's saying a lot of words and literally saying nothing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how just parking an airplane up there and letting that doesn't it just <laughs> doesn't mean anything. It's someone who doesn't understand science just putting words together. Because what he's saying is what he'll go up in the air and when you go up you're above Washington DC, then the earth will spin on its own like a disc. Right. And then you'll just come down onto like Paris, France. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Like a frisbee would spin around, you go up, and then when it spins halfway around, then you come down and now you're in a different country because you you've traveled now. You let the earth do the it in plane the isn't for moving. You. The plane just goes up, okay, and then comes down like a um like an old record player. The right. needle just goes down. Well, I guess that kind of stays around though. So yeah. never mind. Well, but his stupid, but. <laughs> his but at this Whatever, time I wasn't he... alive when record players were around. Dave was. I was not. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole different experience with the phonograph. The. Yeah. Music was crisper. Dave, time. what are eight tracks? I don't know what they are. I've heard about That's them. before my time, eight of, tracks. Stop it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I did have a cassette once. Did you? Yeah, I had a few cassettes. Did you have cassettes? Yeah. I think we've talked about this before. We talked about it the other night. Because someone played on, a, on the record? The no, podcast? No, oh. no, when we were hanging out. Someone was See, playing. people, I, we hang out without just recording and talking we, to you guys. We do. If only those conversations were recorded. <laughs> someone was playing Eminem the other night when we were hanging out. And I said that I brought the, the cassette right, you tape. You the cassette and you got in trouble at yeah, school. Like fifth grade, the first Eminem album yeah. brought to school. Principal played it in front of my mom while I sat there. How embarrassing. Yeah. My daughter listened to Eminem, I think, when she was probably eight years old. Well, right, but her school didn't find out. Her school would have gave a shit, probably. Yeah, probably. I think is what Ian was saying. 
Yeah, my principal wasn't thrilled with it. So I got but you suspended. Weren't, you were just brought it to school like you weren't playing it in class or anything? Oh, no, me and my friends were passing it around wow. to each other and laughing and right. having a good time. <laughs> but uh old cassette tapes yeah. sorry i derailed us so anyways they would think that the plane went up the earth circulated around and then the plane came down and boom you've traveled but he, he was thinking when he had this idea he was thinking the earth was round still well that's confusing as well <laughs> right, that's what well, I mean. obviously it was but it makes you know, more sense when you think it's flat well, actually well, that theory that's what he got to is because when people are like yeah that doesn't really doesn't really make sense. Like, that's not going to work. He was like, then he was like, well. Oh, the earth's flat then. <laughs> Basically. Okay. <laughs> so, after he, uh, <sighs> after he did some research, Samuel founded the Flat Earth Research Research oh, Society. In the alien community, that would be first. Yeah, that's not, that's not great. It's the same thing today, though. They never People make don't it. understand science. <laughs> Just dumb people. Dave, I'm sensing you don't believe in this flat earth theory. <laughs> I, I, I'm just tired of putting up with dumb people making rules and, and this and that. <laughs> God damn, you're a fucking imbecile. Just be quiet. This is ridiculous. <laughs> he, he founded this in like in, uh, in 1957. So a year after Samuel's organization was launched, the first satellite, Sputnik, was also launched. And you would think that this would prove once and for all that the sh- that I would just end the debate on the, might the shape of the uh, Earth. It was fake, I guess, right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, he basically just said it didn't happen. Oh. And even if it did happen, the photos that that it would take were made to look like the earth was round because the the satellite probably used fisheye lenses. This fisheye lens argument? Yeah. So this is the uh this is the first time that this defense pops up that everything's fake and that's a main go-to for all flat earthers that everything in space is just simply faked. All photos taken of the earth from space are faked, but We'll get more into that stuff in a little bit. So let me ask you, if I have one of those globes, spinning globes at home, Mm -hmm. and I get out my camera and I attach a fisheye lens to it, (laughs) and I take a picture of it, does that mean my globe is then flat? No. It means you're you're taking a fake (laughs) world. It's not really an argument. You're taking a fake world and taking a photo of it, which just makes no sense whatsoever. You should take a picture of your map. With a fisheye lens. Like, open up one of those old school map books, take a picture of that with a fisheye lens, That's already and you'll understand flat. exactly what they mean. <laughs> well, so was the Earth. <laughs> Based on what they're saying, take a picture of your map with a fisheye lens, and that's what you get. Taking a picture of a globe is false already because you're taking a picture of a ball, <laughs> you fucking globe cuck. <laughs> so what you're saying is the globes in school, I'm sorry, the Earth in school... Should have been a frisbee, not a globe. Yeah, according to them. Okay. And you could debate on whether it had ice around the... What's underneath? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Space. But, like, the bottom side of it has to be something. Yeah, look Is at it, these pictures. So if you, dig, if you dig a hole long enough, you're going to fall out? Yeah, exactly. It's some, a yeah. little bit of rocks underneath, and that's it, right? Yeah. From the illustrations I've seen. All right, and we'll put out some of those illustrations then, just to... Whatever and there's some sort of argument that it's we're always accelerating upward, but I think we're going to talk about this. <laughs> I really don't understand what accelerating <laughs> upward means. Yeah. Well, let's have it explained to us. <laughs> so Samuel Shenton was he was also he was the first person to publicly deny the entire space program, including the moon landing. Oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> he went on. Uh, yeah, shout out to Ed. Yeah. He had from Pod Van Dam. <laughs> he went on multiple TV shows with his theories and spent his whole life arguing these beliefs. He Samuel died in 1971, and things went quiet again on in the world of uh, flat Earth stuff. That was until Daniel Shenton, which is no relation to Samuel Shenton. Bullshit. That's weird, <laughs> right? All their lives are a lie. Samuel Shenton's from the UK. Daniel Shenton's from the US. Uh-huh. They're related. Stop it. <laughs> there's, it says there's no relation. Same dad, two different moms. So, so they keep saying this, but I've yet to hear one concrete bit of evidence that the space program well, let has Dan- been fake. Let Daniel Shenton speak. Well, he, did, he said 
he just died, and he said it was fake. No, Samuel died. Look, dude. Daniel Shenton found of the flat. Do you said Daniel, right? Yeah, well, that's where yeah, we're at. Yeah, 2004. Now. Let him speak. Yeah, so <laughs> we're on the next page. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Dave, we're on page four or five. <laughs> the top of page four. He. <laughs> Daniel Shenton, we introduced. <laughs> we just talked about this last guy that died arguing the space program was fake. Yes. Did we not? But yes. Daniel, his long lost relative, apparently not, picks up right where he left off. I know he picks up, but I... this is why you can't drink Crown Royal before we record. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm the, just kidding. The moon landing is a full episode in itself. I, I agree, but yeah, there's and that's not all different reasons one for one shred of evidence offered. And I I'm agree. talking to you directly, Ed, <laughs> that any of this was fake. Well, that's not fair. He can't address it on his show because they're a pro wrestling show. <laughs> Maybe we'll have him on for a moon landing show one day, and there you and you and him can debate it out, and Ian and I will moderate. Like Sounds we're fucking good. Dana Bash and Jake Tapper. <laughs> So, so when Daniel Shenton came into the picture, he uh, he founded the flat the Flat Earth Society in, in, in two thousand four. The Flat Earth Society, and that's, that's Fess Fess. It's still they're not, not as good no, with their acronyms. You gotta be. You gotta get in the alien community, man. Yeah, not, not great. Mufon, Fufor, Kufos, Kufos. Fuck off! I was gonna say fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Did they write themselves. Nicap. Even that one's nice because it sounds like nightcap. Mm. It makes you just want another sip of alcohol. I like Robert Bigelow's though. Nids. Nid, well, that's nids. Nids. that almost sounds, yeah, like sounds an, official. It sounds like an STD. Got some nids. Yeah, I got the nids last night. <laughs> Loving someone. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Continue. So the Flat Earth Society is the most well-known group out there. Their big claim in this whole argument is that gravity is an illusion created by the momentum of the flat earth consistently constantly accelerating upwards <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> does it mean anything <laughs> upwards to where like we're propelling through this non-existent space on our disc earth i, I don't understand it's so there's no gravity right i mean i understand what they're saying <laughs> right. i don't understand that <laughs> so it's the the earth is just going up. And because the earth is going up, things just go down. Exactly. Would that also not be gravity? That's not the gravity. Things are going down because the earth is coming up to get it, to, to take it, to catch it. No, that's not gravity. Where is the earth going? I have questions. <laughs> Dave has questions. Yeah, I don't know. They're on a collision course Because there's, no spa- there's no space, right? Some of them believe in space. Most of them don't. I would assume to believe this, you would have to believe in some form of space. Who, what do they think is out there? Now, we talk about that fucking Charlie Day timeline thing going <laughs> yeah, on here. Right. <laughs> That's what I feel like we're trying to do here. It's just space. There's no stars. If you believe in stars, you're going to hell. Right. It's just space. And I don't mean that in the sense of like outer space. I just mean like area. And this is going up. We're going up on this flat earth Like disc. through an infinite universe where we just keep going up? Well, we're not in a universe though, Dave. That doesn't exist. Well, we are, but but are we're we the center of but that we're universe. the center of it? Yeah. But so then the center keeps moving and everything moves around us. You're asking a lot. So of So like questions. the earth, the the sun and the moon rotate around. Like I've seen their their graphics that they put together. Yeah. The, the sun and the moon rotates around this disc that's the Earth. And so if is, we're, if we're elevating, then they're elevating with us. Right. And it's everything. So you mean like our gravitational pull is keeping them with us? No, they don't believe in gravity. <laughs> that's not accurate. I'm just um, asking a question. In fact, they actually make fun of gravity. People that believe in gravity, gravity, and they call it gravity. <laughs> wow, good one. <laughs> they should have called it cuckety. <laughs> This is the dumbest group of people I've we've ever talked about. Have you heard Jonestown? <laughs> <laughs> trying to fire Ian up over uh, here. So Dan- Daniel Shenton, in all fairness, he's a little more reasonable because he does believe in evolution and global warming, which he calls climate change because the Earth is because you know it's not a globe, <laughs> right? Of exactly. Um, and he gets a fair amount of criticism within the movement, and they basically say that he's some type of a... A globe cuck? Yeah, he's like some type of a <laughs> deep state operative thing, spreading lies. Hmm. There's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of other people throughout history that have pushed this idea, but that's kind of a general timeline of, of important people. So that gets... 
important, uh, Thornton, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so that would get us to what I was always, what I always wondered about this before I started digging into the flat earth conspiracy theory is like, what, what's the end game? What's the, the motives for hiding the shape of the earth? Pissing Dave off. Well, because my thing, I would always joke around and be like, what are all these like globe people that make globes like cashing in on this conspiracy? Oh, you think that's what it is? No. The globe sellers of the world? <laughs> that's what I'm like, what is the that's, end what, that's game my here? theory. Yeah, the I manufacturers so. in Taiwan that I are think, making the uh, I think globes? the people who make the globes, yeah, they have control over this earth and they're just fucking raping us for cash for some made up ball that we all buy and we subscribe to this theory. Why wouldn't they just make a flat disc then? But why they have already got a soul in the globe. People like more of a round. Like what's more what's more uh you know aesthetically pleasing? You want to look at a disc or you want to look at it like a globe? So you think it's aesthetics that's behind the root of all this. I think that's part of it now. Interesting. Sure. Interesting theory. Of course. Mm-hmm. A well, globe is more aesthetically pleasing. What do you really do? Play basketball or throw a frisbee? People prefer basketball. Everyone likes to have a ball in their hand. Yeah. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> Say He's what? Like, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> well, actually, they're... I'm saying what people who make artificial globes... <laughs> right. They are controlling all of us. Snow globes also? Where you shake it up? Um, No, but I think that helps feed into the belief of it. Interesting. Yeah. Because um, who doesn't love a snow globe? They look pretty. They're nice. They're fun. You don't want a flat snow disc, right? Who the fuck wants to own a snow disc? No. I don't want a <laughs> snow disc. There's nothing to see there. <laughs> There's, there wouldn't be. <laughs> I want a nice globe where things can just like kind of fall and look pretty. This is so it's aesthetically fucking pleasing. stupid. <laughs> what right, would let, you let, rather let. look at? Like... <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. So the actual motive behind all this is that... Uh, it's all on the government and NASA, who they say NASA stands for never a straight answer. Oh, it's very clever. I like very it. clever. I always heard that kicked around in the alien world. I'm like, I like it. Right. And then I Yeah, now you can't. You can't support that now. No, now I can't. But it, when it was attributed to aliens, I'm like, that's, that's pretty but good. But we don't, we don't get into NASA a lot with the aliens. No, not really. No. I just used to think it was funny. But then yeah. I saw that. Fucking the. Flat Earth the, have taken it. Yeah. The flat cucks stole that from us. <laughs> so the purpose is it's not to hide this the shape of the Earth. It's to hide the fact that we don't have a successful space program. There is no... NASA is just a complete failure. In all reality, what NASA's goal or what NASA's purpose is to them or what they believe is NASA actually guards that ice wall around the outside the rim job yeah and doesn't won't let anybody get close to it who's anybody i you know what? oh people traveling closer uh, to the perimeter uh, right and what do they do shoot them you know and i don't know that's ridiculous because we all know <laughs> that the night watch guards yeah. the rim the ice rim john, the ice wall john snows up there. <laughs> this is a stupid game of thrones right? <laughs> get the fuck out of here people are turning off this podcast right now and i don't blame them yeah, so when they get into this whole, um, the whole motives and stuff, that's where things get kind of, get kind of dicey, and I was watching a video earlier of a girl that was talking about Flash, I sent you guys, you didn't get very far into it, I watched her full 40 it minutes. So I put it on, <laughs> and I saw it was 33 minutes long, and then I immediately turned it off, <laughs> and I was like, I'm not listening to this chick talk that long about it, Flat Earth. It was very rough, but like, like you with, sent us a thirty-three minute video, and dude, like an hour before we were supposed to be here, and you're like, "If you guys have time, check out this video." Well, that's the thing with all these videos is they're so long. Yeah, all of them are they so have long. nothing to say. But a lot of them, when you watch them after a while, and you st- and then you get into this whole NASA thing with the the wall, like guarding the wall or what NASA's doing. Then it gets into the Freemasons are behind some of this mm. stuff. Ooh, that would be a fun story, well, show. And then it gradually gets into the Jewish members of our society really? being behind things. So it's like, well, now we've gotten there. Like every other conspiracy theory, Good God. you got there. So ridiculous. Um, I'm not saying that's what the Flat Earth Society and Daniel Shenton does, but when you watch... Is Daniel you- Shenton still alive? Yes, he is still alive. I could tell by the way you're talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> Very careful with your words. But Dave, Daniel Shelton, 
Shenton? Shenton? Not Shelton. familiar with that gentleman. I, <laughs> so far, I'm not fond of his ideas. Okay. Well, that was disappointing comments, Dave. <laughs> I wanted us to have to edit some shit out. But <laughs> the, the YouTube stuff, it almost always it gets there to this anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic stuff. Freemasons from flat Earth to anti-Semitism. Well, that's why I wanted you guys to watch that video if you guys had time, because this girl goes on at Disney and ABC. It, it just gets so out there with all this other conspiracy stuff that's like wait after a while I'm like I thought we were talking about the earth being flat now you're telling me that Disney's this Jewish ran thing that's taken over the world like what is happening right now? But if you right can now? make people believe in flat earth why can you not take them on that journey and make them believe in all this other shit? Well, that's what I was saying in the beginning with like the stupid Sandy Hook shit and the, the other and the pizza gay stuff it's it, this is the bottom of the barrel so if you're Oh, it's the bottom of the barrel, all right. <laughs> so, the so, anti-Semitic stuff is just ridiculous and but it disgusting. Always, and it's did just, you know about this connection, though, Dave? I did because I didn't watch that whole video because the, the anti-Semitic stuff is just garbage. Well, I, I just the guy that I sent the other video I sent you guys, the guy that was harassing the NASA employee. That one I didn't in see. Starbucks and got oh, himself I watched that out. one. That guy has a YouTube channel of and he's he a does. big he's a big promoter of. Um, so there's a NASA guy. And in Starbucks. Um, so if you what what can people YouTube to find this? It's it got tight. It got taken down off of YouTube. I had to find it through some weird. Maybe we'll post. Yeah, it. we'll post. Is the guy getting a so couple, fucking we'll, cup of coffee and his jag yeah. off was bothering him? We'll tweet it out. We'll tweet that one out. If uh, if you follow us on Instagram, check out our Twitter because we won't be able to post it on Instagram because yeah. it's a long. Well, we probably could. Yeah, it's check out our fucking Twitter. I'm not going to learn how to do all that. Well, um. The, the, that Check guy. out the Twitter and we'll post it. And it's just a freaking NASA employee. Yeah. Um, goes into a Starbucks and then gets harassed by flat earthers. He tries to be nice and give the guy some stickers, some NASA <laughs> stickers. I think, yeah. that, I think that pissed him off more. <laughs> he was not. I got this cartoon stickers from <laughs> NASA. <laughs> God, but damn. but going back to the anti Semitic stuff, that guy has a YouTube channel and he's a big. Um, one of his big things that he puts out there is that NASA is actually Hebrew oh. for to deceive. Oh, that's not great. real. That is 100% not real. It doesn't. It's a fake talking point. Yeah, it's not real. But like I said, on YouTube, you say whatever you want. And, sure. But yeah. Oh, I hate these people, the absolute worst people. And, uh, so, and we'll try to, we'll, we'll, I'll talk to our social media share and we'll try to get that on Instagram as well. If we can figure out how to put the whole thing. <laughs> you do <video>. that. <laughs> Well, Instagram only lets you upload one minute videos, but then you can do those longer extension ones. But we'll let the social media director figure all that out. <laughs> Sounds good. Either way, look for the video. So, but it, this is then this this next thing coming up. This is kind of like their whole almost like a mission statement kind of thing from the Flat Earth Society on what the uh, the motive would be behind hiding the the shape of the Earth. There is no flat Earth conspiracy. NASA is not hiding the shape of the Earth from anyone. The purpose of NASA is not to hide the shape of the Earth or trick people into thinking it's round or anything of the sort. There is a space travel conspiracy. The purpose of NASA is to fake the concept of space travel to further America's militaristic dominance of space. That was the purpose of NASA's creation from the very start. To put ICBMs and other weapons into space, or at least appear to. The motto, scientific exploration of a new frontiers for all of mankind, was nothing more than a front. <laughs> NASA's early rocket research is well documented to have been a complete failure, plagued by one disaster over another. At some point, perhaps after Apollo 1 disaster, it was decided to fake the space program outright and use rockets which only needed to fly into the air until they disappeared from sight. 
This all went from nearly every launch being a failure to a nearly flawless track record, able to land man on the moon multiple times without error. With only two public spectacles of failure in 45 years. <laughs> it kind of sounds like a nerdy Bernie Sanders. Is <laughs> what it reminds me of. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. The Earth is portrayed as round in NASA media because NASA thinks it's round. They are not running. They are not running a real space program. They wouldn't know what shape the Earth truly takes. At the time of NASA's creation, the general population already believed the Earth was round, based on the handed-down <laughs> teachings of the ancient Greeks, which is why the depict. They are depicted in that manner. As with everyone else in the country, the people at NASA were taught the fiction of a globe Earth from the cradle. So there was no doubt in their minds as to how to display it. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, uh, Nerd Mike. He just left without even talking to us. <laughs> Probably to clean up all the spit he just put all over me. <laughs> Jesus, man. There's a lot to unpack in that statement. Yeah, I mean, that's... I, I guess the one being that after the Apollo 1 you know, disaster where the, where the astronauts burned up, they made substantial changes to the design of the ships and everything based on that disaster. And I, don't, I don't know what they're getting at here. I've seen some real nonsense YouTube ones saying like, that the uh, the Apo- the what was that one Apollo the Apollo one was they they it was like a, a test launch and the, a fire started on the, on the launch pad and they all burned up it was Gus Grissom and yeah I can't remember the other two guys names but like that was a turning point and they made a lot of design changes based on that on that tragedy I've seen YouTube videos out there talking about like crisis actor kind of things associated with the Apollo Jesus. One thing. <laughs> You're not. That's what I mean. Is with the like when we said earlier, there's always a conspiratorial answer. Mm-hmm. You're literally never going to win an argument with these people on anything. There's no changing right. their minds. So I mean, that's basically the thing is that it's it's all everything in our space program is fake. Every, every, literally every picture we've seen is faked, and the Flat Earth Society has a whole rundown of evi- at their quote evidence for every every space mission, all kind of stuff. And I mean, it would take forever to get into that, but it's out Close. there, and it's. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> See, as far as their proof of thing, it really just comes down to have you seen it? Because they want to see it with for themselves. Have you seen? Either of you guys seen Jupiter? Uh, according to the app on my phone, <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> have you ever traveled high enough to see the Earth that it's curved for I yourself? Have. Yes, you can climb a <laughs> ten foot tree. Oh, yes, I have. That, yes. in that case, yes. Well, according to Dave's argument, I have. So There's lots of arguments. <laughs> but I've never this left. Is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Space. So while 99% of the flat earth community just makes videos for YouTube, there's one uh, there's one guy out there that's truly trying to see see it for himself and his name's Mad Mike Hughes. Mad Mike is a 61-year-old limo driver who taught himself rocket science. He used that knowledge to build a functioning rocket out of scrap metal and then in 2014 he launched himself almost 1400 feet into the air. And that was all just to see the curve of the Earth for himself. He had a good parachute, I assume. I would assume. I would hope so. It's pretty high up there. Did he get in trouble? Like, didn't he hit the <laughs> FAA's radar? Like, something, right? Like, you're not really allowed to do that. <laughs> from what I saw, he was doing it in, like, a ghost town type area. Like, yeah. like the desert kind like, of. Like, remember the guy, a couple, like, gear? Guy was probably 20 years ago that had, like, a chair... And he attached like a bunch of helium balloons to it, and he floated himself. Yes, yeah. I remember, remember that. Remember that guy? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like he got in big trouble because he he went like through LAX airspace and all <laughs> kinds of stuff. Well, and he was also about to expose NASA for what they are—frauds. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to see the ice caps. No. Nope. NASA would have shot him down probably then, right? Because they're protecting. Probably. The... Probably. Yeah. You would assume. Well, they're time. the never a straight answer organization. <laughs> so yeah. So, and then uh, Mad Mike also 
to his credit, he holds the Guinness World Record for the longest ramp jump in a limo, which is 103 <laughs> feet. That's pretty fucking sweet. Now, that's though. awesome. Yeah, I'll give I mean, that guy props for that. That's awesome. Can he be the official Necro DD and just drive us around <laughs> everywhere with his fucking drink in the back and talk about this shit? <laughs> Call me crazy, but I get, I, I'm i guessing we could get Mad Mike on the show, maybe. I would probably say that we could. <laughs> <laughs> no. In 2017, he tried again, and this time he launched himself 1,900 feet in the air, going uh, 350 miles per hour. During this attempt, while the countdown was getting ready to go, the rocket started leaking fuel, and the pressure started dropping, and Mad Mike just said, fuck the countdown, and just hit the button and launched himself. <laughs> and he... uh he parachuted down safely, and uh, the Associated Press was there to film it. And, and when they asked him what he was going to do that night, he, Mike said he was just happy to go home and see his cats. Hmm. That's all he was looking forward to do. All right. But he's currently working with another group called Research Flat Earth to go even higher, um, building something that he calls a raccoon, which is a mix of a rocket and a balloon. That if it works out, it will send him 68 miles above the Earth to officially see it for himself if if it's curved or not. Mm. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be curved. <laughs> 68 miles above the Earth is pretty fucking far. Yeah. Somebody's already done that, and there's already pictures of it. <laughs> They're fake, Dave. <laughs> Have Mad, you not been listening to a word we've said tonight? Mad Mike hasn't seen it for himself. Despite being able to accomplish all of this stuff on his own, Bad Mike still does not believe in science. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this is what he said about science. Do you even science, bro? <laughs> I know about aerodynamics and fluid dynamics and how things move through the air about the size of certain rocket nozzles and thrust. But that's not science. That's just formula. There's no difference between science and in science fiction. Goddamn. <laughs> guy's a real American hero. If this guy shoots himself 68 miles above the <laughs> earth on his own, I'll fucking get behind him for that, but... The guy's already done that. The, the army hero in the 50s. We talked about this before. Did What's we? the guy's name? Well, he went smart. up like 50 miles above the, the top of the atmosphere and jumped out of a fucking balloon. Oh, uh, Project... What's the guy's name? He free fell... Wait. 50 miles up. Joe, uh... Did we talk about this? I did on one of the earlier shows. That guy's a mm-hmm. fucking badass. It sounds like it. Joe, Joe, Joe. We See, can... This is eventually why we're going to do a, a trivia show against me to remember these old I cannot episodes. remember his name, but that guy's awesome. Just stepped out of a fucking <laughs> balloon at 50 miles above the earth and free fell. Well, in all fairness, Mad Mike's going 68 miles. It's an extra 18 miles. I don't believe Mad Mike is going to go 68 (laughs) miles. Well, you also didn't think that Mad Mike was going to take a limo 103 feet in the air. (laughs) And he did that. I don't know. I didn't answer my question from the beginning. I I put on my my conspiracy hat. I I dove in headfirst on this shit and... I can't figure out why people are so angry about this or why and why they're so into it. And believe yeah. In it. What the, I mean, I'm into my own shit and aliens and all that stuff. And I mean, really, I'm it's, I don't give a fuck if people think the earth is flat or if it's round or whatever. Just don't be so fucking aggressive about yeah, it. Yeah. And don't lump in all the other bullshit about like the anti-Semitic stuff right. and, and all the other nonsense, you yeah, know, it's just bad. So that's flat earth. And then I'm Joseph Kittinger, Kittinger, American hero. I don't remember talking about him. Look that guy either. up. He's a fucking badass. Maybe right. Mad Mike needs to talk to Maybe him. Maybe he's a Maybe flat he earther, Dave. He's not a Wouldn't flat Wouldn't that break your heart? You don't know that. He <laughs> literally saw the round earth when he jumped out of the fucking <laughs> Did he balloon. say that? Did he say those words? <laughs> and you got anything else on uh, flat earth? No. I guarantee that I missed a lot that I'm sure... We're going to Especially hear about on YouTube, we will hear comments but from people. when every fucking person out there has their own video, we're going to miss a ton of shit. <laughs> right. You, we gave the the story, the history, and the main points. Yeah. Dave, what do you got? What are your What are your final thoughts? I just there's so many ways to disprove this theory. Just like I said earlier, you can climb a tree and you can clearly see farther 
10 feet up in a tree than you can on the ground. If you watch a ship sail away, the hull disappears first, so it's clearly curved because the hull, you know, you can still see the mass of the ship yeah. as the hull disappears. A, a lunar eclipse? Oh, no, no. Presents the shadow <laughs> of the Earth on the moon, and it's not a disc shape. It's Uh-oh. a circular globe uh, I was, shaped. I was hoping that an eclipse would get brought up. That's caused by the anti moon. That, that that's not the even the fuck's a an anti moon. No one really knows, but it sure as hell isn't from around Earth. The anti moon. The anti moon. No one knows what it is exactly, but it sure as hell uh, isn't because the Earth is round. <laughs> Boom! Roasted. <laughs> Next argument. I don't even know what else to you say got. about that. We're gonna start throwing out <laughs> facts. The What's the anti-moon? One, the Next. simplest one: you can put sticks in the ground, you know, miles <laughs> apart, and the, the the sun will cast a different size shadow. On There's them, no which, such thing as miles. And the, Boom! I mean, Next one. <laughs> that's what the Greeks the Greeks used to determine, you know, the <laughs> circumference of the Earth. And they've known us for three thousand years. I don't. <laughs> 3,000 years ago, they figured this out. Yes. People today with all this technology still can't fucking <laughs> I just, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't have a good answer here. <laughs> I'm glad you brought it. I'm up really drunk and I don't have a good answer <laughs> for this moon. nonsense. <laughs> That's the my anti-moon. favorite thing. moon That's my favorite thing we've ever discussed on this. Mm. I might like that better than Mr. Muggs, the anti-moon. Well, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> they don't know either, <laughs> but it's the anti-moon. I don't know. Someone told me on YouTube about it, so That's I'm going to say it. Is. If you go to the one Wikipedia, there's a flat Earth wiki, and you go to Anti Moon, it's nothing there. Oh, that's but weird. But it causes the eclipse, but there's no information on it. Oh, Anti Moon, <laughs> just awful. Oh man, dumb people are ruining the planet. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, I, you know what? I don't know. It makes you wonder if it's really that much of a phenomenon. Like, um, some of these videos have millions of oh, hits, yeah. though. Oh, yeah. Some of like but maybe there's just views. people laughing. So I, I Yeah, it's know. hard to tell how many yeah, people are sure. laughing and how many people are taking it serious. Like it's my the, opinion that the people at these conventions should be rounded up and deported. That's <laughs> my opinion. Well, like the girl that Sent I where off the off, off the edge of the yeah, ice off cap? the rim over the Antarctica uh, NASA ice should, rim. NASA That's should right. open up the ice and send yeah. them all right. off. Launch them, kick them off, three hundred style. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is global <laughs> and kick yeah. them off. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, like that girl that I was watching, because after I watched that video, I, while I was waiting for you guys to get here, I was kind of going down some of her other ones. She's got thousands of subscribers and mm. thousands of people that comment on her videos and are like, you're saying the right stuff. And it's all this nonsense about tying the Bible in with the Disney company and ABC, all these corporations. It's just, it's it takes such a turn. And yeah. that's what I was saying earlier. It's like, I don't do whatever you want, but... When you start lumping in that uh, that hateful shit gets mixed in with it, yeah. then it's like, then it gets weird. Yeah. New shirt idea, front. Yo, you like the moon? Back of the shirt. Nah, bruh, I'm anti-moon. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. And it's just a dark shirt because That's there's it, no huh? moon. Yeah. Right. The anti-moon. Yeah. We'll see on the dark side of the moon. Boom. There it is. Maybe Pink Floyd were flat earthers. Hmm. I don't think so. The greatest musicians of all time. Yeah, okay. But not flat earthers. That's a whole other episode. (laughs) What shout outs we got today, Ian? So for iTunes, we have Sam860, Poop Eater, (laughs) (laughs) 1334, Corey P. Part, uh, or sorry, Corey Corey J. Part. Corey J. Peart. Peart. From from Anwan, Illinois. Uh, Sienna Loonley. And then uh, then Connor11. Sorry, Connor, for the the Christianity stuff. I just can't get away from it, man. I appreciate the <laughs> the good review, but yeah, we had some. Good I thought I thought we were getting listeners. Thought we were getting away from it tonight, but it all Earth. goes back to the Bible, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> and Corey, three quarters uh, life crisis is probably pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> he nailed that one. That was a good reveal. I was cracking up reading. I that. quite liked it. All right, take us home. We're not doing any social media tonight. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, Necronomapod.com. We got some uh, new shirts up there. They've been up for a few days now, but um, go ahead and check them out. Put in an order. We're taking pre-orders on them now. It'll be a, just a few weeks, and then we'll have the orders put in, and 
um, we'll have the shirts available to you guys. So we put the, um, the teasers out a few weeks ago on social media and you guys seem to really like it. So we're excited about these, uh, the shirts we have available. So, um, check them out, put in the order, necronomapod.com. You can also check them out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at necronomapod. Check out the shirts. Let us know if you have any requests for future episodes or just let us know what you think about uh, Christianity or Flat Earth or, you know, anything else we covered today. I love Christianity. You never know. Hey, maybe there's someone out there. Um, But, yeah, hit us up at Necronomapod and Necronomapod.com. Are you guys ready for a cool down beer? Cheers. Let's go.